Arctic Star Exploration, operated by a team of proven mine finders, is focused on diamonds in Finland and the Northwest Territories of Canada. Work programs are underway in Finland and Canada. Arctic Star trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol ADD, on Frankfurt symbol 82A1, and the OTCQB symbol ASDZF. Please visit our website arcticstar.ca or call us at 604-689-1799. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for ChartsAndMarkets.com. Welcome back to the show, Bob. Yeah, Jim, good morning on this very pleasant Friday. The U.S. equity market, six days of decline, and all of a sudden, Friday, the board is green again. What's going on? Yeah, well, we've had a, a very sharp hit to the stock markets, and uh, it came down here, and, and yesterday's pressures were quite intense, but it was enough on our technical model to give a springboard buy, and we should place this in context. Uh, the bounce is following this. Uh, technical excess, of course, but I think it would be just about uh, the bull market has been absolutely marvelous, magnificent comes to mind, and also that carries with it complacency where uh, maybe many fund managers would realize that the stock market is very overvalued, uh, say relative to earnings or relative to GDP. GDP, or relative to you, the one I like to look at is wages, the average wage, how many hours of work it takes to buy a unit of S&P, and all of these are very are higher than reached in 2007, very much higher, and even higher than reached with the dot-com bubble in 2000. So we're dealing with exceptional values, but you're also dealing with an investing community uh, that uh, accepted this became, as the term is, complacent about it. So this now, I think we can say complacency is now, uh, we've got a tombstone for that one. Complacency died uh, this week. So then the question becomes is the nature of the rebound. And as I've said, the uh, it looks to me like the start of more than a serious correction, and it could be the, the start of a bear market, which will take more work to determine that. But behind this, Jim, we've had uh, the usual support for the stock market, um, it likes these days with crude oil going up that's been a positive because it helps the junk bond market and uh, what one looks for in in a changing market is the uh, credit spreads the difference between junk yields and treasury yields to reverse and we've been watching for that but what happened was is that these began to reverse in June and then the whole thing went on pause on the credit markets, and that was also the case in the yield curve, which was inverting where short rates were hit, uh, sorry flattening, where short rates were rising faster than long rates, which is typical of a mature bull market. And uh, then they went sideways for a couple of months. So in looking uh, at it as we were writing, into September uh, with the firming crude oil price. Never mind why it was firm, it was firm. So then we slipped back into the old uh, seasonal tendencies for crude oil. And uh, so more than 10 years ago, the seasonal pattern was that you could get a nice rally into late uh, September, early October, which we did. So it was part of uh, this uh, hit to the stock market. And also with this one, the, many of the pundits who have got onto the yield curve lately have been expecting that 
it should become inverted with the boom, whereby short rates actually come way higher than long rates. But, uh, oh, we've got the history of the U.S. yield curve going back to the 1857, I think it is. And there are instances where you had a business expansion and a bull market uh, end without the curve actually inverting. What you need is just for it to reverse, which it has now done. So everything was ready for a change. And it began a week ago Wednesday when... The Federal Reserve had one of its regular announcements, and it was something about, you know, keeping rate, short rates high. And But at any rate, uh, interest rates from the short end to the long end all of a sudden went up. And within this, the curve changed, and the credit spreads began to change. So there was uh, a fair amount of warning on there. The other one that was war- that was uh, very supportive through until June were industrial commodity prices like base metals and well, if you took a look at at uh, lumber, it had its own fabulous bubble right up to 649 in June and crashed all the way down into the low 300s. Uh, the decline in lumber could be bottoming in here in the next little while, but. The other ones, uh, the base metals, often they can set a seasonal low in uh, November, December, and crude oil can set seasonal lows in sort of like a December, January kind of thing. So these items that were supportive uh, more or less all turned beginning a couple of weeks ago to no longer supporting, and then what prompted it, Jim, was just, so that went a week ago Wednesday when around the world interest rates went up so and the stock market couldn't handle it and the reason why the stock market couldn't handle it is because it was overpriced and over sentiment and over momentum and all that sort of stuff so we have had a very sharp hit to the market we'll have more with Bob Hoy right after this Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Vatic Ventures Corp. is a potash exploration company focused on the Korat Basin in Thailand, the world's largest undeveloped potash resource. Vatic's management has extensive potash exploration and development experience in Thailand. Vatic will have marketing advantage compared to Western producers. Drill program commences this spring. Vatic trades on the TSX Venture, symbol VCV, and on Frankfurt, symbol V8V2. Visit our website, vaticventures.com. Welcome back. We're talking with Bob Hoy. Bob, you noted that used car sales uh, have hit a 15-year low. However, small business confidence is still very high. Is this kind of a conflict or something you see? Maybe one's ahead of the other. Uh, The small business uh, optimism index, there's uh, an association that keeps track of it, has been doing very well. It's had a long run of of improvements. And the report I saw, they noted that the the month for the report for September was down a tick. But the main thing is it's been a long rise on it. But then you get an entirely different series like used car prices. Wow, the whole you know, there's a that's a whole big part of the economy is the is cars and car prices and uh, so I just flagged that one as as uh uh, uh, as I say, the, uh, the, the sharpest plunge in 15 years. One has to take note of that. There's, so what we look for here is change, and this is what we're getting. Uh, and on, on a market like this, Jim, this is the first hit. Uh, many investors would be shaken by this and uh, then but bullishness is hard to change you can say well we were 
on our models and our uh, friends of the bull market, they're all positive to around mid-year, we can say. And then that's when, with using some wordplay, I said that we were cautiously pessimistic. And then late August, it was uh, got rid of the cautious and just said pessimistic because basically everything was so good. And then you have a long history of if there's going to be a liquidity crisis, it'll happen typically in the fall. Now, well, there was other things going on that were very helpful in anticipating a break in the market, and that was that the uh, outlying stock exchanges like Hong Kong or London or Europe, and there's even an index that keeps track of all of those exchanges uh, without, you know, X the U.S. And so they essentially all had that January high and uh, had a hard hit. And then each of the rallies didn't make it beyond the earlier one. So in August, these outlying exchanges started making new lows. And then one the quote I like to use is by the Roman writer Cicero back in Roman times. And he was noting that when there was a financial disturbance in outlying regions such as Phoenicia in the Middle East, that if there were financial problems there in the credit markets, and they did have credit and mortgage markets back in Roman times, that the problem would eventually hit Rome, the financial capital at the time. So this is ancient wisdom, and here we have it. Again, the other one I noted in the summer was that with the Asian crisis of 1997, that began in Thailand on July 1st, and the reporting and authorities said, oh, it's just a problem with the the Thai central bank and their currency and currency is going down, they've lost the reserves, interest rates going up, but it's just isolated, it's only one country. Then it spread to the Philippines, and then that was then the boast was it could be contained. And then when it finally rolled on to into New York, uh, New York bond market, the corporate market suffered one of its worst uh, months in a decade. Now, that wasn't ready for uh, a bear market or anything like that, but it was a hit. So here we are again now, but you're in within a very mature stock market. Uh, and I've said with huge valuations. So this is a different game, Jim. Uh, the old, the, uh, the wave of disaster eventually came from Asia, uh, to, uh, to the financial center in, in New York. And it's going to be very difficult. I think the game is changing. We get a bounce in here now. And what one wants to look for is, the items that would give support and the items that would be giving support would be uh, suddenly crude oil turning around and rallying but we're in a probably a seasonal decline the other one would be industrial metals uh, base metals uh, turning around and rallying but we're in a seasonal decline there so uh, i think this uh, depressed condition for the stock markets will continue with some very vigorous but short uh, rebounds such as we're getting now. We'll have more with Bob Hoy right after the break. Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp, RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp is a Canadian-based mineral exploration project generator. The company currently holds multiple property interests in Ontario with joint venture partners and is seeking further joint venture partners for other drill-ready properties in our portfolio. For more information, please visit our website at rmroyalty.com or call me at 604-922-2030. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. 
Welcome back. We're speaking with Bob Hoy. Bob, China just posted a record trade surplus with the U.S. Does that mean the tariff wars are going to continue? Uh, no, I think uh, my view on the tariff measures that Trump has been attempting is to undo the unequal stuff where uh, outlying uh, economies because, you know, 40, 50 years ago, they were all very much weaker. So they, uh, many of the trade agreements were favored the outlying regions. And uh, as Trump has done, he said, we may get it back to being fairer. Of course, you got a bunch of communists in Beijing, and they, they don't like to be pushed, so they're shoved back. So I wouldn't call that protectionism. They also, the other thing is that the U.S. has always lived with a trade deficit. And if you look at the chart of it over 40 or 50 years, <laughs> the deficit goes up in a boom and down in the contractions or the recession. So that's, uh, for uh, an investor or trader, that's a non, non-issue. But historically, Jim, what happens is if we go into a severe contraction, which has followed every great financial bubble in history, then what happens is that domestic unemployment go goes up, you have hardships, and the domestic politician has to pay attention to that. And there will still come in and say, oh, uh, let's put up some protection. And one of the dreadful ones uh, in U.S. history was called the Smoot Holly, and it was brought in, I think, in May of 1930. So it was brought in very quickly, and uh, it was uh, devastating. Then, going way back in history, the 1825 bubble was huge, uh, as measured in London and, and in Europe, but at that 1825 uh U.S. financial market was very unsophisticated, but nevertheless, with the uh, contraction that followed that, the U.S. came in with horrendous tariffs, and they, at, in real time, they call it the tariffs, the tariff of abominations, which is about the most despicable description you can think of. So anyways, yeah, now that is is another step. If there is a recession... Unemployment will rise, hardship will increase, and local politicians will go for protectionism. It's just the way history works, and it'll be it'll be sad to see. Uh, we'll see what happens as as time goes on. So, does protectionism work? No, it, it's a disaster. It doesn't help the politicians. It, it it one of the things about an economy is that everybody has different skills. So you have your own best skill as an individual, and you sell that on the marketplace for what the market says it's worth. And then different regions uh, have, like uh, West, the western part of Canada produces oil. And uh, because of silliness and by a bunch of uh, progressives, we can't export the oil. And by the way, the spread between U.S. oil prices and Canadian oil prices is now $50. So I think the Canadian price is down to 33 or something like that. But at any rate, uh, in an ideal world where people can export, uh, you export what you've got. And uh, so a free market is a wonderful, very clever way of getting things done and getting your the services and products that you want at the best price possible. So when then you have hard times and local politicians come in with protectionism, I'm telling you, Jim, it is just plain evil. But they can't help but do it because they then, each local politician, wants to stay in office or win office, so he'll promise what the public is clamoring for at that time, and ah, let's um, let's find something cheerful to talk about. <laughs> let's find a place to 
invest in, in in previous contractions. An ideal place would be to own some um, high grade corporate bonds, but uh, so you avoid uh, risk. And uh, but to avoid the problem of price changes on term, you want to be in the three to four year maturity. And then in Canada, of course, the U.S. the Canadian dollar is going to go down relative to the U.S. So an ideal investment position would be good grade U.S. corporate bonds, uh, three to four year maturity. And with the U.S. dollar going up, which I think it will do, uh, you get a, a better return out of it. So one can, in a storm, can go to straight cash, but T-bill rates are going to go to zero. And so then if you lock in some yield uh, this way and uh, without much risk, it's it's an ideal place to be. Bob, on Wednesday, Canada becomes the second country on the planet to legalize recreational pot. Any thoughts on marijuana stocks in a situation like this? Have we ever seen anything like this before? Yeah, liquor stocks years ago, Seagram's and Hiram Walker, when the U.S. was, but they weren't public then. But no, uh, I won't be recreational with it. I, that was me decades ago when I was doing a lot of skiing and we were smoking the stuff and enjoying it. But uh, the that this date is well known. The marijuana stocks have been acting well, and it's. I would say it's all in the market. So then it goes back to competition and business, and the 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 companies that have good businessmen will do well, and others. But but also it's been very speculative, and a speculative sector, no matter how attractive it is at this time, is still going to be vulnerable to overall market forces. So. It'll be interesting to watch. We haven't got anything uh, like any sell signals at the moment on on the uh, on these stocks, but we'll be watching for opportunities of that nature. Bob, thank you so much for chatting with us. Hey, Jim, good to be with you. My guest has been market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for chartsandmarkets.com. If you have any questions for Bob, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.